views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Do you need assistance in discovering what you truly want in your life? Are you feeling unhappy and stuck and are clueless how to change that heavy feeling? The Laura Longley Show delivers powerful ways to work through common problems and stuck points. This fun and unique weekly show invites some of the most creative and transformative practitioners and authors, hypnotherapists, EFT practitioners, acupuncturists, and astrologers, among others, to activate your wildest dreams. Get ready to tune in to be more of who you truly are. Laura and her guests will take your calls and help you bring your brilliance to a greater brightness. Get ready to snap to a whole new level in your life with joy leading the way. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness for good. Now, here is your host, Laura Longley. Good morning. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us experience, let us help you experience ways to get unstuck and live an inspired life full of meaning, purpose, and happiness. Each week on The Laura Longley Show, we have some of the most gifted practitioners, speakers, and authors helping you to make authentic and lasting changes in your life. My guest today is Melissa Peel, who is a psychic medium and teacher, and Melissa's topic today is matters of the heart and we'll be talking about the heart chakra why it's important and what you can do to keep yours healthy melissa and i have both had some things going on personally that involve our heart chakras and we'll be sharing those stories with you so that you can see where it fits for you and melissa will also take your calls with your questions about your own heart chakra and later in the show she's also going to be giving away a free 30-minute session to be done by phone or skype so be sure and stay tuned for that I want to remind you that on Facebook, we spent the month of November talking about gratitude. And of course, now we're into December. So we finished up that even though we all should be focused on gratitude every day, whether it's November or Thanksgiving or what time of year it is. But in December, we're going to be focusing on love for others and for ourselves. And today I'm sharing a technique that I recently came across that's really helping me to create the life I want and overcome my limits beliefs. And so I'd love for you to come and take a look at the page, see what you think about that particular technique. And you can find me on Facebook at The Laura Longley Show. And since it's Monday, the last 15 minutes of the show, we will be doing call in for tarot reading and intuitive coaching. So if you have a problem or an issue where you would like a little bit of insight today, write down the phone number and get ready to call in later in the show. The number is 800-930-2819. Again, 800-930-2819, and that'll be the last 15 minutes of the show where we'll be doing that. Well, let's just dive into talking about the heart chakra, so let me introduce Melissa. Melissa Peel is a psychic, medium, and teacher who has been intuitive her whole life. She offers readings that provide insight, empowering you to make informed decisions going forward and help you overcome obstacles from your past or present that are blocking you. Melissa is a medium and can connect with your past on loved ones also. She's a natural teacher by trade and teaches adults and children about their gifts and how to embrace them comfortably. Melissa has written about reaching out to intuitive children in Karen B. Good's book, Kids Who See Ghosts, How to Guide Them Through Fear. Melissa currently resides in Raleigh, North Carolina, and is grateful for sharing her passions of intuition, spirit connection, and teaching with others. Let's welcome Melissa Peel to the Laura Longley Show. Hi, Melissa. Hello, thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to have you here. Um, You were my very first guest when I started the show in September last year. And so it's kind of fun to have you back on again. And, And you're also my friend. And so I love having you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, it makes it a lot more fun when there's that uh, connection. So um, not not that I don't learn lots of good stuff from other guests that I have on the show, but it's a little bit different when it's somebody I know personally. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. So you decided that you wanted to talk about the heart chakra today. And maybe you could share a little bit before we get into talking even about what it is and why we care, but 
maybe you could share a little bit about how you decided that that's what you wanted to talk about today. Yeah, so um, in short, for our listeners, um, I was going through a period of time where I was feeling very stuck lately, especially when it came down to figuring out what I was going to even want to talk about on this radio show after having an invitation. And that was one of the big key things right there that even struck me was that I was so stuck. And one of the reasons behind my stuck, my stuckness was because I had recently um, gone through a relationship breakup. And of course that's going to affect the heart. And with everything that, that transpired from that, um, I just found myself kind of feeling it in an upside down space in my life. Not really sure about much, much of anything. And realized it was kind of ironic with the work that I do, um, with the work that I do specifically, I help people kind of get unstuck and try to get to the the heart of the matter or the core of what's really causing issues. And here I was being stuck just like everyone yep. else. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that happens to each of us, isn't it? <laughs> it just happens to everybody, no matter who you are. <laughs> yep. yep, absolutely. And And I also think it's interesting that, you know, because you make a great point that this is what you do as your life's work is to help other people who are in that position. But sometimes those of us who do this kind of work, it it isn't always obvious to us when we're stuck. And sometimes we need some outside help to get unstuck just like other people do. Absolutely. Could not agree with you more. Yeah. Yeah. So so from that per from that perspective, that's why this mm-hmm. is really a um, a personal matter for you as well. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So yeah. so maybe you can share a little bit about, I mean, I know that we have, I mean, we have more than seven chakras, but the ones that we normally think about are the seven chakras um, in our body. And our heart chakra is the fourth chakra. And um, I know, I know that it is, I mean, it's, in the position of our heart. (laughs) That's why it's called the heart Mm -hmm. chakra, right? You said something uh, when we talked last week that I I, kind of knew, but I really hadn't thought very much about because you were saying you knew you still had some more clearing to do there because you were feeling um, sensations in your chest, but also in your back. So the back part, it's the the back door, (laughs) like, of the Mm -hmm. chakra, right? Yeah. And I um that really resonated for me because I've no I notice I'm learning to notice where I feel things in my body. And so I've been feeling things in that heart chakra area too, but I associate it with my chest. And when you said that about the back, I've also had some issues. So it's kind of like b- between your shoulder blades area, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So so I just wanted to throw that out there that that struck me because that was something I hadn't really thought about either. So, you know, when people who are listening are thinking about where they feel things in their bodies, it can be either or both of those places. Yeah, absolutely. It can be, you know, in the front, in the back, on the sides, anything that's around that general area where that chakra is found, where the energy is, that definitely takes an effect. It'll the, the energy has to go somewhere anyway. And it right. definitely has some physical ailments coming with it too. Mm-hmm. So um, why why um, above, well, I won't even say above, because, I mean, all of our chakras are important that we have them in balance as much as possible. But what are some of the things that occur for us when that isn't true for our heart chakra? When things are not running the way that they need to? Right, uh, so some physical things that can happen, you mean? Well, just in general, how might that show up in our lives that we would know we had an issue with it? Uh, so it might be physical, but it might be other things in our lives. Gotcha. Um, so many times it's people who feel lost. Sometimes they're losing passion, their drive, things get kind of jumbled up. Um, we talked a little bit about the physical symptoms, but I'm just going to mention those also yeah. so people are aware they can experience heart tightness or tension in that area of the body. Sometimes they might have blood pressure issues, either very, very high, sometimes even below, because again, blood pressure should be normalized, not one or the other, and that symbolizes imbalance. Um, 
and for myself after this, I was actually noticing that I was experiencing shakiness. And granted, it wasn't in the actual heart, but knowing about energy, it can't be created nor destroyed, and it goes somewhere. Right. And in my body, it was actually occurring in shakes in my hands when I would wake up. And I thought to myself that something was really wrong. But then, you know, just coming back into my body after waking up, I realized that everything was starting to normalize and stabilize. And it was just a matter of my heart having taken such a hit from the the trauma of what happened to me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So those Um, are some ways. So so we might feel so aside from the physical symptoms, we might feel kind of lost. We might feel like we don't know what our passion is or what what we feel um, called to. Is that right? And it could be lack of self-love, lack of respect for ourselves. Um, We might feel detached emotionally from different things. Um, Some people even experience the fear of commitment because that means that their heart, they're not allowing their heart to really be in something. Right. Um, Some may may actually experience um, many grudges, you know, the inability to let go or the inability to give and receive love equally. You know, allowing yourself to actually love yourself, but also allowing others in close enough to even feel that love and give it back to you as well. Right. So so there are a lot of fairly significant ways (laughs) that, Mm -hmm. you know, that we might be impacted in our lives if we are out of balance in our heart chakra. Yes, absolutely. And so what... What are some things that, well, actually, we only have about a minute till break, so I don't want to start getting into that piece. I'm just going to share one little piece of what's been going on for me that's that's related to my heart chakra before we go to the break. And mm-hmm. that is um, I had kind of a breakthrough about six weeks or so ago where I had been working with a practitioner who I've been working on a lot of subconscious beliefs. And the one I really wanted to get to was I am lovable. And we finally got to that one after almost six months of working together. And ever since then, I started noticing that I had this real kind of tightness or heaviness in my chest that the way that I usually deal with those things to help them dissipate wasn't working anymore. And I actually had a session with an energy healer that I'd been working with earlier this year, and I asked her about it. And what she said to me was that it was this real fear of um, that if I'm not lovable, then I will die, that it's literally a, um, you know, a survival fear. And it's something that gets handed down, you know, from our ancestors, if you were thrown out of the collective, you were going to die. And so obviously, it wasn't real. Um, I'm not going to die, even if I'm not lovable. But the work that I had done had uncovered enough that I could actually look at that now. And so I was really feeling feeling physical symptoms. And so I just wanted to throw that out there so that, you know, people can start identifying, you know, what's going on in their lives that also might be related to this sort of thing. So we'll take a quick what quick break. My goodness, I'm getting tongue tied here. And um, when we come back, we'll talk some more about what we can do about it. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Melissa will share more about the heart chakra. Stay tuned. In this world, it's hard to get it right. Trying to make your heart feel like a glove. Are you feeling stuck? Do you want to be free from fears and doubts and finally feel good about yourself, but you just don't know how to get there? Dr. Schaub's Accelerated Breakthrough Program provides you with the tools and solutions to go beyond your limitations and achieve self-empowered confidence. Call for your free phone consultation at 866-903-MIND. Visit CellularWisdom.com. That's CellularWisdom.com. 
Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit the truth is funny.com. Laura Longley is on a mission to remove stuckness from your life for good and replace it with happiness. Tune in Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness as Laura and her guests deliver powerful ways to work through common problems in this fun and unique hit show. What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? BeingYouClass.com Tune in to Peace World Radio, vibrant conversations to change the world with Christina Jans each second Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com and KKNW. This hit show is energetic, vibrant, and an engaging forum that's getting people talking. Christina brings you extraordinary and courageous people, bold in thought, and action who dare to dream that things can be different. Peace World Radio. Join the talk the world is having. Love, love, love. Everybody, everybody wants to love. Everybody, everybody wants to be loved. We're back on the Laura Longley Show. My guest today is Melissa Peel, who is a psychic medium and teacher. And we're talking today about our heart chakras. And everybody's got one, and everybody needs to uh, make sure that theirs stays in balance. And right before the break, I was sharing a little bit about what I was experiencing recently and that it really came from ancestral stuff. It was not mine my own, but it was affecting my heart chakra. And so as Melissa and I were talking on the break, um, she suggested we talk a little bit about past lives and how that can affect us as well. So go for it, Melissa. So before I even jump into all of that, I really wanted to just kind of mention um, that for the heart chakra, it actually can be imbalanced differently for each person. And to just kind of dig deeper into that for a moment, we all have different, you know, tipping points, if you will, around what we handle, what's okay to one person may not be okay for another. Right. And therefore, the amount of work that it's going to take to keep our heart chakra in balance um, certainly is varied. And that also leads into, you know, something else people commonly ask, which is, well, does it happen to more people, you know, some people more than others? And the answer is yes, absolutely, because a variety of things actually affects us. Um, speaking more to the past lives, um, my belief is, around that is that we do come back into this lifetime having lived previously and taking certain lessons with us from those lifetimes and so forth. Well, as you know, always we are trying to evolve as a soul. And there are times when we really get the lessons that we signed up to learn, and then there's other things that we don't, which is why we come back and reincarnate to try and learn uh, and master those things so that we don't have to continue to suffer. And eventually, by the time that we do learn everything that our soul needs to, uh, the time is up. And we don't need to keep continue to reincarnating. Um, but this heart chakra specifically may take a hit because whatever we happen to come into this lifetime with, um, 
is not just from this time. It can come from previous. So some examples of that might be um, if, if there was someone who had experienced significant loss every time uh, he or she would have loved. And maybe in the past lives, the person would either, you know, die prematurely or get killed in war or something along these lines. Chances are that person's soul was getting used to um, trying to love and then have to get ripped away. Because then maybe this lifetime they would come back in and decide, you know what, I'm just not going to go there. And they block out love completely and they have more of a hard shell, you know, with this attitude right. of like, nope, no, I'm not even going to go there. So that can certainly influence our heart chakra. Um, it might be the relationship from one person to another from the past. Other things that um, can affect it this time around in our lifetime is the environments that we grow up in. Of course, you know, that is going to always impact us right, because that's right. where our, our core values come from, which is what we've seen, what we've learned from our parents or those that are around us, um, the ideals that are there, and also the um, society that we live in. As an adult, what do we decide to do with those things? Um, so you have this kind of recipe, if you will, of our past lives, how we grew up, the different sort of ideals that were given to us, and how do we take that and put that into our society? These are the things that all get mixed up, and this is why each of us varies so much with our heart chakra and getting, getting off balance or staying in balance. And, and, you know, it makes perfect sense to me that we're all different, that, <clears throat> um, you know, some of us, it's more of an issue than it is for others, because I look at it, it's, you know, it's just like anything else in our life, you know, we inherit certain things genetically, to me, that's the same as inheriting things from our past lives, or, you know, the environment that we grow up in. So, so I totally get that, you know, for some people, there may be more focus there for others, not as much. So let's say that I notice that either I'm having some physical symptoms or I'm not creating in my life what I want to that is related to heart chakra issues. Like maybe I don't even know what my passion is, right? I don't know what I feel passion about. What, what is it that we can do to start to shift that? Mm-hmm. Uh, the very first thing is going to sound so simple, and sometimes people go, wow, that seems really strange. But the answer to that is just breathe. And oftentimes we forget to just breathe. <laughs> well, as <laughs> you said breathe. that, I took a deep breath. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do. I know I do. <laughs> and it's, it's really helpful to just breathe because sometimes we're on the go, 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 and we forget to give ourselves a moment of transition, just be in the space and then get into it in that way. So that's certainly one aspect is just breathing. Um, on a body perspective, because we always want to stay balanced, body, mind, and spirit, of course, body-wise, keeping your heart pumping, exercising to get that heart going. I kind of think about the heart often as sort of a funnel, if you can imagine, clearing and filtering out things and when our breath just kind of remains the same or we're not utilizing that muscle to keep it strong, um, the same things come in, same things go out. And we're not really mixing it up to get our heart to be that funnel, taking away and filtering out those things that don't serve us and opening itself up to make more room for the things that do serve us. So we want to make sure that that body component of exercising and breathing together help us to kind of keep things clear. Mm-hmm. On, an, um, on a mind and spirit sort of level, um, you know, for the mind specifically, getting a therapy of some kind, whether that's actually speaking with a counselor, a, a mental health professional, even having a reading with someone like myself, often people will tell me, oh, this, this is really like just like therapy. This helped me get right to the core of what the issue is that right. therapy sometimes goes around about because the person has to do the work, not someone with a gift who can delve into it. Um, so therapy often makes a big difference, helping us to figure out um, what the issue is, but then more importantly, which actions to start incorporating in your life to turn that energy around. Um, on the spirit sort of aspect, often people will go get energy work. Mm-hmm. And so, so there's many different energy modalities out there. Um, Reiki is a very co- common one, <clears throat> excuse me, 
where an energy worker will be able to shift and change and rebalance the energy. And I like to think about that sometimes almost as a storm drain, kind of like from the roof of a home, the drain bringing the water down back to the earth where it belongs, because truly that energy is not ours. We don't want to hold it and we need to find an aspect to let go of it and release it. And sometimes even crystal therapy can help us. And those that might not be familiar with crystal therapy, um, there are many natural gemstones and crystals that have, they all have different properties. And with the right combination of those crystals and gemstones placed at the different chakras or the energy centers in the body, um, they all can work together kind of, you know, like a team helping to purge and, and release certain energies so that you do get yourself back into balance. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of body, mind, and spirit keep yourself together. Um, And, of course, it's it's going to vary for each person. But those are just some different ways that that do help keep things as maintained as possible. Well, I'll tell you, for me personally, one of the ones that has really been helpful for me is acupuncture because acupuncture moves energy also. And um, the, the acupuncturist that I go to, I think, is just so incredibly talented. And she'll also throw things in there like certain crystals or maybe essential oils that do certain things. And um, that's re- I've really found that to be very helpful to me. And another thing that I've found to be helpful, and this has come out of learning that I've had working with an energy practitioner, and that is doing... I don't know if I want to call it meditation, but it is like meditation, but it's focusing within myself and being able to um, visualize moving energy in certain ways. Like one thing that <clears throat> I've been doing ever since I became aware of this um thing with my heart chakra is that every day when I do my meditation, I will envision my heart chakra opening and um, like a, (laughs) it sounds terrible, like a sewage pump, you know, drain coming out of it, where I say, you know, everything that doesn't belong to me, or that no longer serves me, I'm flushing out. And, And that's been really helpful for me, too. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm going to piggyback on that, too, that um, I love the fact that you brought up the body work around the acupuncture. I also have experienced the wonderful benefits of that, and it has made a huge difference in my life. Um, and just, you know, even getting regular massage. Um, I, as, as we talked about earlier, was experiencing this tightness in my back and my physical front of the heart. Just this weekend, I received a massage, and we spent a lot of time just opening and releasing the gateways for this energy to leave. And it was amazing, the difference afterwards. And don't get me wrong, it was a little bit painful too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Which it always is because it needs to, you know, kind of like your analogy, let that sludge go. And it does feel a little bit tough at first. But then once it gets out and moves around and loosens, it really can open up things quite a bit. Yeah, that that's a great one too. I've actually been looking for a massage therapist um, the past, well, less than a week. Last week, I started thinking about. I haven't gone in a long time, and I would love to do that. So, so hey, anybody in Seattle who's listening, if you have a massage therapist, you like, email me with who they are because I'm still looking for somebody. Anyway, it's time actually, for actually on my website. There's a resources page, and there are some people on there that you might look at. Oh, do you? Well. Yeah, people in Seattle. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. I will do that. <laughs> okay, it's time for another break. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about our heart chakras. Unforgettable That's what you are Un- Are you ready to give your home a fresh look but don't want to do the work? Help is a phone call away. Kathy's Handy is a full-service general contracting company specializing in home improvement, remodeling, and repairs. 
Kathy's Handy, are specialists in kitchens, baths, fireplace makeovers, and finished carpentry. And they partner with other amazing specialty subcontractors needed to complete any job. Friendly, energetic, and dependable with an impeccable reputation to get the job done while keeping you as comfortable as possible during the transformation of your home is the hallmark of Kathy's Handy. Call Kathy now for a free estimate. 206-715-8126. That's 206-715-8126. And visit kathyshandy.com for a complete view of possibilities for your home. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T-H-E-D-R patshow.com for listening times in your area. Tune in each Wednesday at noon Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for the hit show Out of the Fog with Karen Hager. Spark your spirit and ignite your soul with spiritual conversation and enlightening guests that'll help catapult you into action. You'll meet metaphysical movers and shakers and light workers guaranteed to raise your vibration. Karen's down-to-earth style and lively curiosity is what makes this show super special. Visit FogCityPsychic.com to find out more and to book your private intuitive reading today. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Get inspired. Create the life you desire with internationally known radio host and motivational speaker, Sue London. Sue inspires millions of people to overcome difficult or traumatic situations in their lives. People feel hope, courage, and are ready to move forward after hearing Sue speak. Book motivational speaker Sue London for your next event at AskSueLondon.com. That's AskSueLondon.com. Though near or far. We're back on the Laura Longley Show, and my guest today is Melissa Peel, who is a psychic medium and teacher, and we're talking about the heart chakra. And I forgot to say, as we were going to that last break, we're going to give away a free 30-minute reading with... Uh, with Melissa and she does all of her sessions by Skype or by phone. So it doesn't matter where you are geographically. So if you want a free session with Melissa, it's to the first caller at 800-930-2819 and you call now 800-930-2819. If you want that free session with Melissa and um, you can use that for anything you want. As I said, she's a psychic and a medium as well. So you can ask her whatever you want on your free session. And Melissa, I also forgot to ask you last segment to share with people how they can find you. So would you do that now, please? Yes, I um, have my website, which is mysticalawakenings.com. Um, Mystical Awakenings has an S at the end, just to be clear. Yes. Um, all my information is listed there. I do have a Facebook page also specific for Mystical Awakenings, so anyone can like that and get updates periodically um, through that. I am also reachable via telephone or um, via email as well, and my email address is melissa at mysticalawakenings.com, which is also listed on my website. Very good. And just once again, if you want a free session with Melissa, a free 30-minute session, you can call in now at 800-930-2819. And again, doesn't matter where you are geographically, you can get that session. So let's go back to our heart chakra conversation. And... Um, I forgot where we're going next. Where did you want to go next, Melissa? No, I just want to really talk about the importance of taking care of it and why that's yes. of utmost importance for us. 
um, first and foremost, if we think about the heart, people always say, oh, well, it's, it's the heart of something. It means that it's the core that runs us, okay? Without it, we would have difficulty being our best. Essentially, it's the thing that keeps us physically going, yes, um, but it basically lets us... Um, uh, let me just get back to my notes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. it's going to be the one thing that, that really helps keeps it, keeps us going, not only in our body, but also in our mind, in our spirit. Um, and if we struggle with ourselves, which I don't really think I know anyone who doesn't. Right, right. <laughs> we all do. Um, and often many things that people struggle with is not loving ourselves enough or even valuing ourselves or even valuing what we bring to the table for others. And oftentimes we don't even realize that we're doing that, number one, but that the second part to that is that we aren't really giving of ourselves either. And basically our heart chakra has to deal with um, a bunch of different things. It is the ability to even love anything, period, number one. Mm -hmm. It, It has to do with forgiveness, number two. The ability to give and receive, and sometimes you can say give and receive love, but I like to put it on a more broad scale. Do we give of ourselves genuinely or are we doing it because we have to? And vice versa, do we really want to receive from people or do we expect them to reciprocate back? Um, And then, of course, the other aspect of that is the health and healing. So there's really four main points that our heart chakra deals with, which is why it's it's of utmost essential. um, It's essential for us to be able to take care of it so that everything runs smoothly as it needs to. Um, Well, and and I think, too, that if we think about it like, you know, just our physical body, if our heart has problems, if we have heart disease, our entire body has problems. And so to me, it's, you know, it's comparable, right? If our heart chakra has problems, our entire being has problems. Absolutely, because that's what a lot of people didn't realize is, when we are at ease, things are working. When our body is not at ease, it becomes diseased. And oftentimes, you're exactly right. Heart disease can come about. Um, you know, there, there can be people who have, uh, you know, again, the blood pressure issues or artery issues, aortic issues, anything like this. Um, I even had heard from one person once that all she kept saying was, I just have such a broken heart. And truly, Be careful with what we say. Be careful what we wish for. Yes. Um, With the law of attraction, with the principle that our thoughts become things, that's exactly what happens is our thoughts manifest things to result in the body. And this person needed to have open heart surgeries and didn't realize, I'm not trying to say that everything like this is created, but it certainly um, has energy behind it and it brings it that much closer to us. So there could, be a, there could have been a variety of different things, but it was interesting to observe the language and the feelings that this person had about herself and how her heart surgeries coincided directly with that. So we always need to be very, very careful um, around what we say, what we think, how we feel, because the body doesn't lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and one thing I wanted to also talk a little bit more about was around the emotions that we carry for ourselves. Because far too often we talk about other people, you know, being there for everybody else, but we forget to nurture ourselves. And that is certainly one of the things that our heart chakra needs more of is that self-nurturing. And one of the ways that I like to think about that is, um, you know, making sure that we give to ourselves first so that we can actually um, continue to give of to others and be able to actually go longer doing it. Um, I know that might sound very selfish to some people. It's, again, it's about perspective. There's a difference between being selfish and taking time for self-care. Right, right. And, you know, a beautiful image that kind of comes to mind as we speak about that is if we're all kind of like a plant with roots, we want to be able to have those roots be provided with the best food and energy possible from the ground. It takes it, processes it before that plant is ever expected to bloom and actually produce fruits of its labor. We have to kind of think about that like ourselves. We need to nurture ourselves and take time from the ground up to make sure that we are nurtured and cared for before we can continue to really genuinely give and produce the fruits of our labor for our other people in our lives as well. 
I, I really like that because it is it is such a nurturing picture. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, the one that gets used frequently, and I've used it a lot myself, too, is, you know, the one about when you're on the airplane, put on your oxygen mask before you help others with theirs, because if you're dead, you can't help anybody, which <laughs> is also true. But your your picture is much more um, gentle, and <laughs> it's not like you're in a disaster where you need an oxygen mask or something. So I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and it is, it's also reminding us that uh, things take time, yeah. that we don't uh, do one act of self-care and all of a sudden we're, uh, you know, our gas tank is filled to the top, that mm-hmm. it is, it's a constant thing and it is something that sometimes, you know, we need to really focus within ourselves and take care of ourselves before we're really going to be able to, you know, do it to help others in a way that really is going to be of service to them. Well, yes, and exactly, you know, you bring me up to another point, which was about the the self-nurturing and so forth. After this recent um, relationship transition that I went through, I saw very clearly, oh my goodness, this is what I used to think, you know, when things didn't go well. And I caught myself realizing I don't believe those things anymore, such as, oh, well, of course this person wouldn't think that. Why would you think that they would, you know? These, these typical sorts of things in ways that we beat ourselves up yes. and realize that we're not gentle with ourselves, but yet we give that gentleness to everybody else. Right. <laughs> and more than anything, that's what made me say, oh, my gosh, this is the heart of my issue at this point was, well, I'm sorry, not the heart of the matter at this time, but in the past. I was right. able to look back and say, okay, I think I actually was blocking myself but didn't know it because I was living in fear of lack but now see that, indeed, I can create this, I can have this, and how grateful I am to have had this because that tells me I'm that much closer to being more heart-centered, more open to allow the right things to come through for me. Well, and that just reminded me, too, of something else that happened for me, I, I think it was last week, where I I get uh, messages from the universe every day in my email from tut.com. So if other people haven't learned about that, go to tut.com. You can sign up for these daily email messages. And they're always really insightful, but every once in a while, one just really strikes me. And there was one last week that said something about if um, someone has disappointed you, think of them as a small child and, you know, all of how they didn't, they don't know any better. They're just learning. And, I started thinking about, okay, who has disappointed me? And I went to myself. I had disappointed myself. And I actually earlier that morning had been kind of beating myself up about something. And so I pictured myself as this young child who didn't know any better and was doing the best I could. And I I mean, I really, I burst into tears because I felt so much compassion for myself in that role. And it's the same thing where we can feel that compassion for other people. We can cut other people's slack, but we don't do it for ourselves. Right. And so reminding ourselves that we're only human too, and we all make mistakes, and nobody's perfect, and we all do the best we can. That's right. And that's one of the things that I really work with with my clients when I do speak with them. Um, I kind of like to think about it as you can imagine a target. There's all these different layers around the bullseye or the center of what's really creating an issue. And working with each person, I try to really dig deep, deeper, deeper, until I get to the core root of what the real issue is. And then we try to look at how does this really affect other parts of our lives. And then once we see that, we can continue to fill the compassion that's there and maybe take some different action steps, which I always ask from spirit, what are those action steps for this person? to be able to start taking baby steps toward achieving their best life in a heart-centered kind of way. And this, that's a great way for us to wrap up this conversation of how you can help people and how other practitioners can help people do this same thing of living their life in a heart-centered way. So before we say goodbye, Melissa, I'd love for you to share once again how people can find you. Uh, so my website is mysticalawakenings.com. 
I have uh, my email address on there as well, melissa at mysticalawakenings.com. I also have a Facebook page for Mystical Awakenings that you're welcome to like. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking with us today. Thank you. And we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I will do tarot readings and intuitive guidance for people. If you want to do one of those, you can call in at 800-930-2819 right now. And I do want to remind you, I don't predict the future. And I would like for you to have a specific issue that you want some guidance on. So 800-930-2819. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. But I knew that it would come. The Tick-Borne Disease Alliance, TBDA, has just launched Bite Back for a Cure, a new national grassroots campaign to build support for the fight against tick-borne diseases. This fall, 24-year-old John Donnelly is biking across America to meet others affected by tick-borne diseases and raise awareness about the national tick-borne disease epidemic. TBDA wants you to get involved in the campaign and follow John's journey. To learn more, visit BiteBackForACure.org. Laura Longley is on a mission to remove stuckness from your life for good and replace it with happiness. Tune in Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness as Laura and her guests deliver powerful ways to work through common problems in this fun and unique hit show. Tune in to the Sandy Brewer Show, getting to the heart of what matters in your life. Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and experience the powerful healing voice of Dr. Sandy Brewer, one of Call and Talk Radio's most dynamic, compelling personalities. Get ready for inspiration and contagious humor and her been there, done that, no-nonsense advice to meet today's challenges. Listen and call in at 800-930-2819 for the Sandy Brewer Show. Tune in each Tuesday at noon Pacific and 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Dr. Julie Show, All Things Connected with Dr. Julie Kroll, featuring weekly segments with David Eisen and the Shocker Sound System. Each week, you will journey through infinite possibilities, expand into social potential, and find beautiful beginnings where endings leave off. Change makers from around the world will explore what's emergent about the environment, relationships, health, the arts, education, and the evolution of consciousness. Visit TheDrJulieShow.com. Tune in to Peace World Radio, vibrant conversations to change the world with Christina Jans each second Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com and KKNW. This hit show is energetic, vibrant, and an engaging forum that's getting people talking. Christina brings you extraordinary and courageous people, bold in thought, and action who dare to dream that things can be different. Peace World Radio, join the talk. The world is having. ACT, Advanced Cell Training, is a restorative healing process created by Gary Blyer to address the body malfunctions that contribute to illness. This breakthrough learning program teaches health insights and principles, strategic integration of both traditional and alternative modalities, while clients train their own bodies to heal themselves. Visit AdvancedCellTraining.com. That's AdvancedCellTraining.com. We are back on the Laura Longley Show. My guest today was Melissa Peel, psychic medium and teacher, and we had a wonderful conversation about the heart chakra. You can find out more about Melissa at mysticalawakenings.com. And some other ways to get help with moving forward in your life on Facebook, you can find me at the Laura Longley Show. And this month, we are going to be focusing on love for ourselves and for others. And on Twitter, Laura Longley SHO, and of course, always the Laura Longley Show. And we do have a caller, so I'm just going to jump right to the tarot. Sure, we'll take Ingrid from Bothell. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Laura. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. How are you? Well, um, I've been a lot better, which is why. Oh, I'm it. sorry. Uh, well, no, it's hard. I, 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 I do healing work myself, multidimensional work, and um. Oh, over the years, often um, my heart's been affected by energies, 
uh, this last few months has been really intense, and I've never had this kind of ridiculous high blood pressure. Oh. Like I went up to 192. Wow. And, um, yeah, and I ended up going into the cardiologist, and uh, he knows I don't like to be on medication. So I'm just trying to see, is this truly something physical, or is it a physical manifestation of something energetic, okay. um, which is what that's the pattern in the past. Mm-hmm. But this one feels so intense that I'm not sure. But I have, I am raising two grandchildren. And so in, I'm in my 60s and it's, it's, you know, the scenario for me is different than a normal person my age. Right, <laughs> and right. So I was just trying to figure out, you know, what in the world, it may be what I'm thinking, how I'm holding mm-hmm. myself, mm-hmm. how I'm holding the stressors in my life. I just, but I'm feeling a little bit in a fog with this level of not feeling well. Okay. You know? So what I'm going to do is, the question that I'm going to ask is, um, what does Ingrid need to know or where does Ingrid need to focus in order to get her blood pressure under control. Yay. Okay. So let's see what card we have come up here and how that will help. I also had something else pop into my head as you were talking that I'll share with you in a minute after we do the card. Okay. Um, The card that came up is the Queen of Discs. And Discs is the suit of physical and earthly manifestation. And so what what I'm reading from this is that there is a physical issue for you and that that maybe for now that you should be doing whatever, um, you know, like medication or other types of remedies that will help Mm -hmm. address it. So I think that that's the the primary thing is to do whatever you need to do to be physically healthy. Now, my own personal belief is that all physical problems are created through emotional or spiritual issues. And right. so I believe that too. great. So, so I think what this is saying is that make sure that you're not going to drop dead tomorrow because of this high blood pressure while you work out what's creating it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now That's the, very helpful. Now, the thing that popped into my head as you were sharing your story that I want to ask you about and see if this resonates for you at all is, how old are your grandchildren? I have a uh, 15-year-old that I've had since she's five. Uh-huh. I have full custody of her. And then last year, I got my youngest granddaughter, and she is now five, but she was four at the time. Okay. And, um, and so, um, that, that has, you know, my, my, the older granddaughter had had a brain injury and we had, it took us about two and a half, three years for her to get through that. Mm -hmm. And I was just last year getting her to the place where she could go have a weekend or an overnight with friends. And then I could have some space right, and some time to myself Mm -hmm. and, um, do some self care. And, um, then I got. The, the little one, franchise. yeah, and she's adorable, and I'm not sorry. No, it's just of that course the not. And the needs of a of a yes. five year old are so different. So, so I think this and does. I, feel, I think this does really fit with what popped up for me, and that okay. is, I feel that you are taking on your granddaughter's emotions yourself, that you're uh-huh. feeling them for them, so that they will not be hurt. And that you're taking on emotions that don't belong to you. And okay. that, that that may very well be part of what's going on with you with your blood pressure. And it's certainly as a mother, I totally understand this. And at the same time, it does a disservice for those children as well, for them not to learn to deal with those emotions themselves, plus making you potentially physically ill. All right. Right. So that might be something okay. for you to look at. Um, if you yeah. are overly protecting them by not allowing them to 
you know, suffer through some of the things that, as children, we all need to suffer through? Well, we do. I do let them do that because okay. they, they do have counseling. We do openly talk about feelings. That mm-hmm. We all run the gamut of all of them. But I think that I'm, I am, it's been heartbreaking what's been going on with the yes, kids for the last I'm sure. 10 years. And I think that that coupled with some of the things that are going on and financial stressors i think it's just like exactly it's ballooning you know and yeah. and so i do I, I do think that i do probably i am impacted by how they're feeling so, so that is um, that's your thing to look at and, and i'm sorry to cut it short but we're coming to the end of the show yeah, no, and so, so i do need to wrap up but the, i would say look at that as potentially the cause for the blood pressure issues Okay, I will do that. Thank you so much, Laura. That's a real gift. Great. Thank you for calling in, Ingrid, and I wish you the best. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. You too. I want to thank my guest today, Melissa Peel, for sharing such great information on our heart chakras. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to the Laura Longley Show with me, Laura Longley. I had a really informative time, as I always do. Please join me every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on KKNW in Seattle, WBLQ in Rhode Island, or TransformationTalkRadio.com. And every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, and 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, I'll be talking with God scribe Sandra Sneed, author of What to Do When You're Dead, a former atheist, interviews the source of infinite being. Sandra will also be taking your calls for readings where she translates God's conversation with your soul. Please join us. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you back here next time. You've been listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Tune in each Tuesday on TransformationTalkRadio.com at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and on KKNW every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and everywhere on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join Laura and her friends as they help you create the life that you truly deserve. For more information about Laura, her services, and amazing tools, visit TheLauraLongleyShow.com. Oh.